how to test an ESU, uh, specifically in this the Violab Force uh, FX, FXC, FX8, etc. They're all the same there. Um, so first, let's we'll start with bipolar. All right. So first thing, power cord, electrical safety. You have a safety meter. I've got Metron MK2 safety analyzer. If you've got a little portable guy, you know you check your ground resistance, check your leakage. All right, at this point, you should know how to do electrical safety. I'm not gonna get into that. We can do another video for how to do electrical safety, but if you don't know how to do electrical safety, then you are in the wrong field. All right, so let's test bipolar first. Uh, I'm going to start off with higher numbers. Let's go to the max, 70. We are all hooked up to my ESU analyzer. I would use this type, or a little portable guy like that guy, whatever you're using. Um, this is just more automated, it gives you features. So if you look in the manual, every make, every model, every manufacturer has different specs on the load that you need in order to properly test it with proper numbers. So for this one, for the Valab line, uh, bipolar only goes at 70. They want you to test at 100 ohm load. So we have 100 ohm load. Set that up. <clears throat> I'm hooked up here. Bipolar does not work without a bipolar pedal. Uh, there's some units you can use the monopolar pedal as a bipolar. This isn't one of them. This has separate ports on the back for bipolar and monopolar. As you can see, bipolar, mono two, mono one. These respond to the different ports on the front. Mono one, mono two. So right now, if I try to do the monopolar foot pedal with nothing plugged in here, there'd be no output. Um, also, I'm not hooked up to anything on monopolar, so there's no output at the moment. Anyway, so bipolar, 100 ohms. We are 70 watts. Hit the pedal, and we are 64 watts. Uh, I got a little check. Okay, so for bipolar, monopolar, uh, anything within 15% or 5 watts, whichever is greater, is the allowable number. So 70 we said was okay, 64, give or take 6. Uh, let's see, 15% of that would be. 7, 14, whatever, so we are less than 14%, how many charge? 14 watts of that, therefore less than 15%, therefore we pass. All right, uh, next we go halfway, check 35, 35 is 33, definitely within spec, bipolar passes. Next up, let's get the monopolar side. All right, now for monopolar, you need a rim cable, but the pin broken off. This tells the unit that we are doing testing. Um, and we can tie this together and have a zero on load. We will test the rim as well. We'll get to that. So right now for mono, we are mono one. All the way to the top, it's going to be 300 on this unit. non dialab units go to like 200. Anyway, so we're 300. Now we have to increase our load. If we do 100 ohm load and we're pulling 300 watts, we're going to fry our meter. So, let's crank this up, and this, according to the book, is a 500 ohm load. You can see that, sorry, so 500 ohms, 300 watt, monopolar cut, and our output is 250 watts. I thought I'd double check the manual, so I could double check, and the monopolar cut load is actually 300 ohm, not 500, and that changes things. Because now, with a 300 ohm load, our output 300 watts is 270, which is within spec because 15% would be what 45, and we're only 28, 30 away from that, so we're within spec. Uh, now you can check the pencil also. Same thing. As long as we're here, let's go to monopolar two. Check that one. Pencil so passes. Pedal won't work. Doesn't hook really up to it, so we're gonna switch that over later. Uh, let's go halfway down on the cut. Halfway, halfway. Pencil cut. Thirty-eight is the spec. This could use a calibration. And pedal. One thirty-eight out of one fifty. Okay. <clears throat> All right, next up, coag. 
Its max is 120 on this bad boy. So we're off by 10. It's less than 10%. So we're in spec. Pencil. Same thing. You gotta test both ports. Pencil and foot pedal in both. Alright. So we did that. Alright, next up, go drop down 60. Go down halfway. 55 watts, we're good. Pencil. Also good. And then you repeat all that on port 2, move the foot pedal over, yada yada. Alright, let's move to the next step, which is the rem testing. Now, for the rem testing, for this one, uh, a rem should be good anywhere between 5 ohms and 135 ohms. Uh, but also, if there's a resistance increase of 40 ohms or more, it's going to alarm as well. Uh, what is REM? So REM is the return electrode path. Uh, so let's say the electricity the doctor is using in this pencil tip here to cut tissue has to go somewhere. You don't want it just spreading throughout the body, causing damage to any organs it hits. So you want the REM as close as you can. So if they're operating on, let's say, you know, a boob, you got to put the REM, you know, you know, on the bottom of the shoulder blade. You want it as close as possible. You can't operate on the shoulder and put the REM way over on the ankle because now that electricity has to go from the shoulder to the ankle. That's a lot of resistance and cause a lot of damage in the way, on the way there. So if you get those calls about, you know, REM alarm activating, find out where they're placed in the path. All right? Um, I have no idea what the resistance of the human body really is, but... You know, 5 to 135 for this bad boy. Uh, so now you can test it on this, on one of these units. You can go and keep changing um, the, the load or the amount of ohms on here and do each one. If you have, where am I doing about three? If you've got one of these, you use this patient plate guy up here. Put your, you know, both ends of your lead finger rim in here. And then this is your little gauge. You know, you're at four should still be red, put a five, should be good. And if you go over 40, it's gonna, you know, start jumping this alarm. So you put it at five, bring it up somewhere, uh, plug it back in again, should be fine. Bring it to 135, unplug it, plug it back in, should be fine. Bring it to 140, etc. Yeah, I guess I'll just show you, right? I'm gonna use a decade box for this, but let me just show you, cause my guys use, use one of these. So I'll make this easy. For this test, you need the lead with the pin on it. So remember, to test the ECUs, you need a pencil, you need some banana leads for the bipolar, and you need two of these, one with a pin broken, one with the pin intact. All right. All right, so on this unit, um, this is the what is this BC Biomed ESU 2000A. You're plugged in. Set of zero ohms and we're red. Let's jump up to the five mark. Look, we're green. Let's go up slowly. Six, seven. Oh, there we go. There it is. 40%. Did I say 40 ohms earlier? I'm sorry, I meant 40% increase. So you're going to increase in contact resistance greater than 40% from the initial measurement. Get some resistance. We'll activate the alarm. This is the name of 5 to 135 we're talking about. So 2 ohms from 5 is more than 40%. Now, to reset this, what I gotta do is pull the lead out, plug it back in. As long as you're within the 5 to 135, that little reset is good. That's how it learned. Alright, so let's get up to a higher number. We already know why we're alarming, right? So let's go. 79, we are within the range, we are red, pull one lead out, put it back in, more green. All right, maybe this for a number of them. So 179 is too much, pull it out, plug it in, still red, because we're outside the range. Go back down, we know, right, let's do 136, still red, go down one, pull it out, plug it in, it looks like our REM needs to be calibrated. 
Oh look, we're in range. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. We're good. 135. <sighs> yeah, it's crazy, right? That I just did that. Uh, 136, we're failed. Back down to 135 again. Pull it out. Plug it in. <laughs> Pull them both out. Let it reset for a minute. Plug it back in. All right, so our rim is a bit out of calibration. Now the other way for me to do this with a decade box, or if you have a bunch of resistors, as we were saying before, four. It's alarm because we're outside the range. Five. Green. Okay, these are a little crazy. This may not be exactly five. I've got a cow. Might just be this poor compact. There we go. Green. Let's go up a bunch. Back to green. Pay no attention to that. for your green. All right, I have a bad connection on this thing, so. Yeah, this decade box is the greatest thing to be using. But that's it. So you test your outputs, all three, and you can go through and do all these as well. Um, I'm not going to do it. It's not going crazy. Uh, and then you test your rem. That's it. You know, pencils and rem are disposable. So unless you're there on a service call for an error, you're not testing the disposables. Uh, you gotta test your foot pedals, make sure they all work. Ground resistance on your plug, chassis leakage, on and off, and that's it.